Hello everyone, we will continue the topic macros as a part of modularization techniques and in the previous videos, firstly we understood the concept of macro, then we discussed the creation steps, after that we started with the practical part. Firstly, we created the simplest macro and then after that we created the macros with placeholder. Whenever you want to replace the values, whenever you want to pass the values, we always, always go for macros with placeholder. And you all know, yes, many times, so we'll say maximum times, we always have to pass the values. So we will go for macros with placeholder. Now we will simply explore the topic and into this particular video, we will make use of macros for the data declaration. I will create a program. In that program, I will show you data declaration. Then we will simply replace that data declaration using macros. Suppose I will create a program. I will not touch this program. This program is as it is. So I will go to SC38 transaction port. Suppose this is our second program. I will go to create. Suppose I will write demo on use of macros. I will choose that type as executable program. I will go for save. I will save this as a local object. Suppose into this particular program, we want to go for VBAK and VBAP tables. So firstly, we will go for declaration of structure type, internal table and work areas. Suppose firstly, I will declare a structure type for VBAK. Begin of, suppose I am writing LTY underscore VBAK. I will simply copy from VBAK table. So in another session, I will open this table. Suppose VBELN type data element of VBELN. We'll go for ER dat type ER dat. Suppose ERZET type ERZET. Suppose ER num type ER. I'll go for four columns from VBAK table. Now I will simply declare the internal table and work areas. LT underscore data type table of LTY underscore data. Suppose LTY underscore VBA. Suppose I will write LT underscore VBAK type table of LTY underscore VPAK. Control D, I will declare work area. Now similarly, I will go for VPAP. Begin of LTY underscore VPAP. VBELN type VBELN underscore VA. I remember the data element. That's why I am using directly. You can simply copy paste. We'll go for VBAP. Suppose VBAP will take PostNAR. Type data element of PostNAR. And we will go for Matena. Type data element of Matena. I will simply end this particular structure. And now I will declare internal table and work areas. This is VBAP. VBAP. This is VBAP. This is VBAP. So I declared two internal tables and two work areas. Now we will simply see how we can use this particular macros 
for these four statements. For these four means two internal table and two work areas. You might have so many internal table and work areas which you declared into this particular program. So you can simply, simply use macros. And into this, we will go for macros with placeholder. Because why we will go for placeholder? Because first time, we will replace this. Second time, we will replace this. First, again, we will replace this. We will replace this. These are the dynamic values. So we will simply create macros with placeholder. So how we will do that? I will simply, simply go for define. You all know how you can define a macro. We will firstly use that define keyword. I will just go for a proper name so that anyone can understand. Suppose I will go for internal table. I am creating a macro with the name internal underscore table. Now I will simply write end of definition. Now in between this, we will simply, simply go for the statements, reusable statement. Just see, just see this firstly to internal table declaration. Okay, suppose for the best understanding, I will keep it together so that there will not be any confusion. So this is our two internal table and this is our two work areas. For these two work areas, I will create a separate macro. For these two internal table, I will create a separate macro. Just see, this is our VBAK. This is our structure of VBAK. This is our VBAP and this is our structure of VBAP. Just see if we are creating macro with placeholder. So it means we need to go for this. This is our one placeholder. This is our second placeholder. So how, how I will do? I will simply go for M% 1. I will simply go for M% 1. Now, I'll use the data keyword. Sorry, I have not used the data keyword. Data M% 1. What is the keyword? Type table of. Type table of. For this, I will go for M% 2. Because these two, these two values, we will replace. This is fixed. This is fixed. We will simply, simply replace this. Now just see, similarly, I will simply create a macro for the work area. I will write define. Suppose I will write work underscore area. I will go for simply end of definition. Now I will write. So now if you see these work areas, we'll simply go for data. Now you can see this is M% 1, this is M% 2 because these are placeholder. We'll simply replace. We will replace this, we'll replace this, we'll replace this, we will replace this. So how I will write M% 1, I will go for type and I will simply, simply go for M% 2. Now we simply defined two macros. Now we need to call these macros also. Now you will completely understand. Now what is the name of first macro? How you can call a macro? I will simply write internal underscore table. Yes, this is the way to call a macro. Now first time, we'll simply, simply replace this. So what is our placeholder value? LT underscore VBAK. What is our second placeholder value? LTY underscore VBAK. Let's see how effective it is. Now I'm again creating internal underscore table. Now what is our first LT underscore VBAP. This is LTY underscore VBAP. Just see how it will work. 
it will simply call the macro which macro internal underscore table it will call data this m percent one will be replaced by what lt underscore vbak type table of m percent two will be replaced by what lty underscore vbak so this is our first placeholder this is our second placeholder this is the value of first placeholder. This is the value of second placeholder. Now, same way, if I will go for this, it will call this particular macro again. This is our first placeholder type table of this is our second placeholder value. This is first placeholder value. This is second placeholder value. Same way, I will go for work area. I will write work underscore area. Now, how I will go for work area? Simply, I will write LWA underscore VBAK and LTY underscore VBAK. Same, I will go for work underscore area. Now, I will go for LWA underscore VBAP, LTY underscore VBAP. Now, these declarations are not required now because we used macros. Now I will simply check the syntax and I will activate and just see the important part. When I call the macro, we are calling the macro before that I defined the macro. Just see how it will work. Work underscore area. It will go for this macro. This is the value of first placeholder. So LWAVBAK type. This is the value of second placeholder. Just see it is same to same. Yes. Now this is the value of first placeholder. LWA underscore VBAP type LTY underscore VBAP. This is our this. So previously we have written these four statements. Now we simply simply replaced with the use of the macro. And most important thing is. If you see this kind of logic, at least now you will not get confused. You can simply understand that this is the use of the macro. And we will see so many places in SAP standard code where SAP use the macros. So now by learning this topic, at least you will not get confused how this particular things has been made. So into this particular video, we discussed, yes, how you can use macros, uh, how you can use macro for data declaration. So firstly, I created a, another program. In that program, I declared two structures, two internal table, two work areas. Now for these internal table and work areas, we'll simply go for macros. So I defined the macro. Just see. In this particular case, we are going for macro with placeholder. Why we are going for placeholder? Because we want to pass the values. Whenever you want to pass the values, you want to go for macro with placeholder. Just understand this particular two, state, two statements. If someone asks you to create a macro for these two statements, just, just firstly think at that point of time. We have data. This is first placeholder because we want to replace this. This is second placeholder. Yes. Let's see the second statement. First placeholder, second placeholder. So I simply created a macro data first placeholder type table of I have written second placeholder. Just see this. If you see these two statements also, these are the values which are changing. These are the values which are changing. So we need to go for how many placeholder, two placeholder. So I have written M% percent 1 means first placeholder, type second placeholder. Then how we simply called, we gave the name of the placeholder. Then we pass the placeholder values. These are placeholder values. So do not get confused. Placeholder and placeholder values, they are two different things. This is your placeholder. This is your placeholder. This is placeholder. This is placeholder. This is placeholder value because it is replacing. This is placeholder value. 
placeholder value value this is value this is value this is value this is value suppose in the previous example yes at that time we have lv underscore output the whatever the value is coming into lv underscore output that is placeholder value it is replacing to with to that particular placeholder so into this particular video we simply studied how we can use placeholder for data declarations now we will further use the more use of the macros in the upcoming videos so that's it in this video thank you